Now I want to show you the techniques for Adobe Photoshop. Um, I'm going to focus on layer control options um, because this is probably the easiest way to add many different stylization to your original drawing quickly. Uh, so let me show you one, one example. When you have your own drawing and you scanned it, and let's open that your drawing in Photoshop. Okay, so I opened my scanned sketch image. Now, uh, now you have to remember, now we are in the Photoshop, it is a raster program. It is not vector program. Meaning that in Illustrator, when you place the sketch to trace, because you're tracing with Illustrator pen tool, the quality of your sketch, the quality of a scanned image doesn't matter. But in this case, we use in Photoshop, it's the raster pixel-based program. So when you scan image, when you place the image on the document, this has to have sufficient amount of quality to it. So now I have my scanned image open. I'd like to add some stylization. The first thing I might think about is to add more interesting background. And I have this wooden background, wooden texture. I'm going to use this for the background for this drawing. Go to File menu, Open. And look for the texture or any image that you want to use as a background. And you can copy the image and paste into your drawing. And now you see the wood texture is in this top layer. And since I want to use this as a background, I'm going to move it down. Now go to my sketch layer. And here is the layer option mode. I choose multiply. This is a very handy tool to put any dark line drawing, pencil or pen and ink, uh, any drawing onto any kind of surface. What I see a lot from students is that when they try to do the same effect, they try to get rid of the white area first and then put it onto uh, whatever the surface they have. But that way, the edge will be really dirty, messy, and it takes more time to do it. But this way you just do one click, changing the mode to multiply, and you have really clean edge, you have all the texture intact from the pencil stroke, pencil texture, graphite texture, and going on top of the uh, different texture. And also, I'm thinking about adding the color, but I just don't want to use a flat color from the Photoshop. So instead, I went ahead and created um, watercolor in separate piece of paper. And I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to adjust the size a little bit. And also I'm going to use multiply to blend this layer to my drawing layer. Probably need to adjust the sizing a little bit. Maybe I just have to individually move some of the area here. And move this green to here. 
And this is just a quick example, but this is a great tool to figure out what kind of stylization, what kind of texture, what kind of effect you want to stylize your own drawing. And let's say if you don't like this watercolor coloring effect, if you actually physically colored it, then you have to redo the whole drawing again. Uh, but because it's a separate image, it's just combined just by Photoshop. So if you don't like it, you can create a new texture, new color with a new media, then put it in with your multiply layer option. This is a really handy way to figure out what type of stylization you can add and you can mix and match. Maybe you don't like the texture, you can bring in the uh, different texture to match the stylization. It's a also a really great experimental tool. So I'd like to show you another useful layer blending mode. I have this example of my ink drawing here. And this would work particularly well if you scan very high contrast, nice, crisp ink drawing. As far as the stylization goes, the first thing I like to think about is what kind of background that I want to use. And let's say if I want to use this textured paper as a background. Drop it into the drawing. But since I lost the color, I should change the mode to gray from grayscale to color mode. Because normally you probably scan your image grayscale if you if it's just black and white. And adjust the size. And since this will be the background texture, I'm going to move this down to the bottom. And before that, I will change this background layer into normal layer. Uh, you can do that by holding the Option key and double click. Now I can move texture layer to the bottom. The previous one was multiply layer. This will be good if you want to know how it's going to look like your drawing with different kind of background textures or color background. But this one, instead of uh, multiply, I'm going to add one more layer on top. You do want to have this layer multiply. So up to here, exactly the same as previous tips that I showed. So here's the new thing here. You make a new layer on top of everything. And you use Paint Bucket Tool. And choose any color that you want. So idea here is maybe I think that black color against this texture is not exactly what I want. Maybe I want to change the ink of the color. So to do that, this would be probably the easiest way. So first, you're going to make flat uh, color surface. And you choose screen. Then your ink color will be whatever the color on top of the layer. Now, this color also applied all the way down to the background texture. If you don't want that, you go in between top two layers, hold down Option key, and click then this color only applies to one layer below, in this case, the drawing layer. Maybe this is not the exact color you want, then you can always change the color. And notice you have to go to the Paint Bucket tool to change the color. These two multiply layer blend mode and screen layer blend mode. These are the two that I think personally 
the most useful tool as far as keeping your original look. And as you can see, I didn't create anything new digitally. This is all depends on the original drawing or original texture I scan. So in my opinion, these two tools are very, very handy tool to diversifying your original stylization. So that was a very basic and very quick uh, tutorial for the Photoshop, but um, obviously Photoshop is really, really deep program. So there's so much more you can do. Uh, but what I wa really wanted to focus here is that I didn't really use Photoshop to create an image. I just use Photoshop to help combining what I already have that I created by hand. So I think uh, if you focus on that, that's a really good idea to keep originality to your illustration. So I'm not uh, rely on Photoshop to create something great. I'm really focusing on my hand skill to create something original. Photoshop is only helping. And the layer options are a great tool just to help compose those different components into one composition. And now we're moving on to InDesign tricks.